Hello everyone, Carlos here. So in today's video, we're going to be talking about how can you track when a driver gets loaded using Sysmon. Now you may ask, why do we want to track when a driver is loaded? And it is because in the past, we have actually seen nation states still valid certificate drivers signing certificates from multiple vendors and use those certificates to sign their own malicious driver. We have also seen now the uptake by ransomware crews with a new technique, which is called bring your own driver, which is when they bring a driver that has capabilities that allow them to disable or kill a known endpoint product using that driver. They'll load that and they'll now gain new capabilities running as ring zero or running in their kernel privilege on the machine. So as you can see, the attacker needs to be local admin and none of our users are local admin, right? Yeah. Sadly, that's not the real world. We're going to find that in many environments, they do give admin privileges to some of their users. So let's take a look and how can we leverage this specific event type. And we're going to start by building a baseline. This is one of those that we need to be targeted in terms of what we do. And it means that we need to build a valid baseline for. Let's go and build that baseline. So here I'm in a Windows host and I created a very simple config for Sysmon. I'm going for the latest version of the schema. I have my hashing algorithm, SHA-256. I'm checking for vacation. Now this means that the host is going to actually reach out to the internet to check a driver revocation list or a CLR. And my recommendation here is if your host doesn't have access to the internet, don't enable this because what is going to happen is that it's going to affect the performance of the machine. So if you have domain controllers, CA servers, in addition to other assets that should never have connections to the internet directly, don't put check verification on those. So I created a rule group here called driver capture. I set it to exclude, so it's going to capture all of those. I already applied this to this machine and rebooted the machine to make sure that drivers got captured as the machine was bringing up. Then I RDP into the machine to then use this machine. So probably capture some of the um, peripherals that are on my host. I'm going to now go over here and I'm going to use PS Gumshoe to pull the drivers that have been loaded. All of them are going to be with event ID number six. I'm going to do get Sysmon driver load event. I'm going just to select the first one so we can go over the fields for the event itself. So we're going to have, what is the image that was loaded? The .sys file. We have the hashes for that file itself. In this case, it's a SHA-256. We can see if it's signed or not, who is the signature, and is the signature status valid? Has it been revoked? Has it been expired? Or is it a valid one? So that's what these fields specifically means here. And now when I look at this system and I output this to outgrid view so we can have a better view, we can see that I have captured all of the drivers here that have been loaded on the machine. If we look at the .sys files here, we're going to notice that we have some that probably are user mode drivers. And you can see that we have some randomness here. So we're going to have to use contains for this ones in specific because we have that randomness there. Uh, here's another example here. So let's now turn this into a rule set that we can apply to our machine so we can capture the outliers. So I'm going to then do here, select. I'm going to go for image loaded. I'm going to go for signed. Signature, who signed it? And I'm going to go for signature status. Now you may go, hey, Carlos, why don't we go and use hashes for all of this? And the main reason for that is that some of these drivers get updated by Windows Update. In addition, that there, there might be other software on the system that may be doing automatic updates. And we may have a couple of false positives there. And as you can see, this is something for more advanced environments to actually leverage. 
So I'm going to output this to out grid view. I can confirm I have all of the fields that I want. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to now turn this into Sysmon rules that I can leverage. I'm going to go over here. I'm going to do convert to Sysmon rule. And then I'm going to pipe this into set clipboard. Now all of this has been saved into my clipboard. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to paste it here. Now, once I have all of this pasted here and I have all of the different rules, remember I have some outliers that in a production environment, I would just set all of this to contains all. So I can just go here and I can do contains all and I would do this for each and each one of the different exceptions as I mentioned now the main reason that I'm not doing hashes and doing contains all on all of them is that they're going to have an impact on the CPU of the machine if I have way too many contains alls so now that I have this basic configuration here I can apply it I can do sysmon minus c Users, CPRS, desktop, driver baseline, applied it. I can actually check the configuration itself. There it is. Now, one of the things that we can do to test this is I can just go here and just go into my C folder where I have Mimikatz downloaded. I'm going to show you how you can actually install the Mimikatz driver. So I'm going to do Mimikatz exe, and then I do expression sign plus, and a driver has been installed on this machine. So if I go over here, oops, I got to exit Mimikatz. I can do get this is one driver load event. Oh, grid view. I'm going to see here that I have an event for the Mimikatz driver itself. You can see that on sign it says it's false and it has a signature of expired signature status. So this certificate is actually expired for this driver, but still Microsoft will load this driver because it doesn't want to break backward compatibility. Now, if we want to take a better view here, I can just do select first one. And here you can see this information for the Sysmon driver itself. Now, in addition to that, one of the things that we can do is we can install this driver, which is used by one of the ransomware crews. I named it malicious two, and then I called it create BYODRV. I created the service, it's successful. Then what I can do is SC start because drivers are actually loaded by a service. Certificate was explicitly revoked by its issuer. Ah, I cannot load this driver. So here's one of those protections by Windows. When a driver is revoked, it will not load on itself. And also in the case of Sysmon, it's not going to get logged because the driver was never loaded on itself. So that's why we have secure boot. Now I've seen some environments specifically around developers where they set up dual boot machines with Linux and they disable secure boot. And this is one of the protections that may be disabled. That's why I still keep on their Sysmon check for driver revocation. Now, if you're running Windows 10, Windows 11, one of the things that you can actually do is just go to Microsoft and they have block rules already prepared and documentation on how to implement these block rules for some of the malicious drivers. It doesn't block all of them, but it does block quite a bit. And now there was a bit of controversy in the past where this wasn't actually working. 
Uh, but Microsoft has fixed that and given the attention that it got, I'm being told that now they have quite a bit of attention being put into it and a QA process to ensure that this specific WDAC rule keeps working. I'm going to include link to this documentation over for you on the description of the video itself. Now, another driver that I know that is malicious and it is on this machine and it's also being used is actually called malicious one. And I have this one on C users administrator desktop malicious type equals kernel. This is another driver by the same vendor that is being abused. Uh, still forgot to change the name. Service still there. We can see that it's part of the Microsoft Windows hardware compatibility publisher. So we can see it there. This is one of the main reasons that I do not recommend as I've seen on some examples out there just to go by signature and signature status and if it is signed or not, instead of specifying the specific file. Uh, that way we can catch all of this outliers being loaded into the environment. So as you can see, we're able to track how all of these drivers are being loaded. But as I mentioned before, this is for some environments that are able to have an homogeneous system in terms of what desktops are being used by what vendor. Uh, if you're using VDI, you're going to have VMware drivers inside of there. If you're using Hyper-V, we're going to have other drivers. In addition to that, this is one of those that if we do get an outlier that triggers, doesn't mean that it's malicious, but we have user mode drivers, stuff that users actually plug in into the machine and be a plug and play. Those drivers are going to be loaded on the machine dynamically. So this is one of those where we just monitor and we're able to do threat hunting against. And there's where we're going to see the majority of the value from this specific event. The, is this an event that everybody should configure in the environment? I wish we could, but given the, uh, the mixture of hardware that I've seen in environments, in addition to BYOD and everything that happened after COVID, where there wasn't as much desktops and laptops available, and people had to rush and get equipment from, B, uh, from Best Buy, and from multiple other vendors out there just to get their operation running. Um, this is not an event that everybody can leverage and it does take a bit of effort. But as you can see, there's some value in it in terms of detections that we can have given the level of skills that an attacker may have. I hope that you found this information useful. Remember, like and subscribe. And I'll see you on the next video in the series. Thank you.